Even with electrification looming in the near future, fans of hot hatches needn't worry just yet. There's still a lot of choice out there. And with the eighth generation Volkswagen Golf, there's no shortage of things to choose from. The GTI range starts with a 245 horsepower standard model. It's available in manual and automatic. And at the other end, there's the Golf 4, which nowadays still has all wheel drive, but gets 320 horsepower. This is the in-between car. This is the GTI Club Sport. It is effectively taking over from the previous Golf GTI TCR, but because Volkswagen is no longer competing in motorsport, there's no point in using the TCR name. So they've resurrected the Club Sport. And that's what this is. This is the driver's GTI, I suppose you could say. That's obviously, some people may want to argue with that, but it is a little bit more special over and above the standard GTI. It only comes with a seven speed automatic gearbox. It comes with the same two liter engine, but it gets a 55 horsepower power bump to 300 horsepower and torque rises slightly to 400 newton meters. Crucially though, all that power goes through just the front wheels. Now it does have some of the same styling features as the GTI, but it does stand out a little bit more. Most notably, this, the lower front bumper is quite different. It doesn't have the LED fog lights that some of the other models do, but also keen ride among you will notice that this side is actually open, whereas your side isn't. So it does have additional cooling there to help with the extra performance that's on tap. And what is quite nice is that how that's all shaped runs through this black element here. And that then is kind of continued through this decal that runs along the side. And the Club Sport also gets slightly chunkier sill extensions along the bottom. Now this car is running the upgraded 19 inch Adelaide wheels. They are an option on this car. Standard, uh, it comes with the 18 inch Richmond alloys, just like the standard GTI. So a couple of the other little details you might notice when you look around the new Golf GTI Club Sport is this car is equipped with Volkswagen's IQ Light and that embossed there on the little red strip. This car also gets upgraded brake discs, so it gets the larger brake discs on the front. You still have the GTI badge on the side, but it's really when you see it side on with that decal and the sills and how it runs from the front bumper that you see how the whole kind of shape comes together. Now, speaking of shape, yes, I know it's a five door. That's it. I'm sorry, I wish there were still three doors, but there aren't. This is what we have now and we have to live with it. But making up for that is around the back. This gets a specific rear wing or rear spoiler. It adds a lot more presence to the car, especially when you look at it from the rear. It's partly black here, it just extends out. I think it looks ace uh, and it just finishes the car off nicely. Now there are also a couple of other features. It still has twin exhausts, one on either side, but they are a more oval shape and they just give a little bit more presence or look to the car, especially when you look at it right from behind. Interestingly, there isn't a Club Sport badge on the car. You have a GTI badge underneath the Volkswagen logo that is centered on the boot lid, but you don't actually have anything that tells you this is a Club Sport. Now, I'm in two minds. Some people will like the fact that it doesn't say Club Sport on it, you may remember the previous Club Sport did actually say it along the bottom of the door. That's gone here. Maybe people will just see this and go, oh, that's a Club Sport and accept it. But I don't know. What do you think? Should this car have a specific Club Sport badge somewhere on the outside? Speaking of badges, it does also have like all the regular Golfs in this eighth generation, the Volkswagen logo marked just there. Volkswagen has always done pretty good interiors and this current GTI Club Sport is no different. It is very nicely finished. You will have to go looking to find any kind of cheap plastics. In fact, right down here, you'll find something, but realistically, any surface that you look or touch or come into contact with all feels quite high quality. I'd like maybe if these door pulls weren't just plastic finished, maybe some Alcantara wouldn't go astray in a car like this, given it's kind of motorsport links. But arguably the most important feature is the steering wheel. It's slightly flat bottomed. It's got these little kind of knuckles here on the side. It all works really well. It's really nice to grip. It's just the right size. 
the indents if like me you tend to drive at kind of almost uh, 10 to 2 or 9 to 3 in a car like this it's very easy to do it gives you a nice bit of leverage through the corners things like that i've gotten a little bit more used to these capacitive buttons on the multifunction controls they're still a bit finicky i would still rather have physical buttons but this is where we are this is where volkswagen wants to go it wants to reduce the amount of physical buttons it has similarly you have your headlight functions here uh, i just leave it in automatic mode but they work fine you can just very easily uh, touch those this uh, gloss finish around the dual displays it lifts it a little bit more i'm not really a huge fan of how the whole thing looks the infotainment system I've had my issues, if you looked at the previous uh, first drive uh, review that we did of the first of the standard Golf GTI, that was a little bit laggy. I've found this to be slightly better. It's still not perfect, I have to say. Um, but the important things, for example, when I get into the car now that I've got my phone paired, it's got wireless Apple CarPlay. For me, that's great that that just pops up and it does pop up quite quickly. But occasionally then, if you need to access something, for example, I had uh, one reader get in touch with us and say, how easily is it to turn off the automatic stop start function? Well, you can do that. There's a pull down screen and you can just uh, pull down and switch it off there and then. Now, that worked fine that time, but a couple of other times I did it for Instagram and things like that. When I went to swipe down, this the menu would come halfway down and then lag and stall and wait and then pop down. So it's not perfect. We know that Volkswagen have said that they're rolling out a lot of updates to try and improve this. It is better than it was. It's still not perfect, but it's getting there. Um, but you know, the main thing is for me, for the features I'm typically going to use, uh, for example, the drive mode, if you just press that, and then you can pick your various different drive modes. There are four in this car. You have Eco, Comfort, Sport, and Individual. And there's a lot of adjustability with those as well. So you can tailor it um, how you want it. And the USB-C ports are there. Uh, I quite like the way it says Golf underneath there. And if you want to charge your phone, this has a wireless charger. Just pop it in there. And this little uh, latch you can close down over to keep your phone out of sight. And for the most part, it doesn't move around that much. If you've got a, any kind of rubberized case, your phone's not gonna budge there. The center console is no different to what you're gonna find on any other Golf at the moment. It's got this little stubby gear selector. It all works fine. You've got a glowing engine stop start button there. You've got decent amount of cup holders, a 12 volt socket, which is also quite good, and an armrest. There's a little bit of storage in there. It's fine. It all works quite well. There is some ambient lighting underneath through there. And overall, it's not bad looking. It feels quite familiar. The view on the touchscreen display um, left in the GTI mode with a tachometer on the center is my personal favorite. It's how it looks best. Uh, and then you've got your speed uh, and your gears on either side, but obviously you can tailor that and run through quite a number of different displays actually. So there's uh, a, a couple of different views and depending on how you want it, whether you want a very minimalist look or whether you want to have that kind of very graphic uh, interface, it all depends, but it works well. You do have quite a small petrol gauge just down there. It gives you your range left, which is probably the most important thing rather than having a gauge as such. Probably my one biggest gripe with this car are these tiny little plastic paddles behind the steering wheel because this is a car that you're probably going to want to do a little bit of gear shifting yourself and I just find that these don't really feel great. They're just very plastic and they feel cheap. They're kind of small. I'm sure a lot of people might get one of these and you know there's there's probably a whole range of different aftermarket systems that you can get for this uh, if you want to have slightly bigger paddles or smaller ones or more metallic ones they've got the steering wheel so right to put these little cheap plastic paddles on just it's a bit of a letdown but on the upside the seats i think are great i really like them they're quite supportive they've got quite a bit of bolstering on the side but you can do long distance in this car it is going to be comfortable you're not going to be aching after a while you know you're your bum's not going to go numb 
um, there's enough comfort there. You can get leather upholstery if you want as well, but I think actually it's fine as is. I quite like the mixed material that they use, especially as it continues this honeycomb look throughout the car. Now I know that the rear seats probably aren't that relevant to some people, but being a five door, you are gonna have people sitting in the back here at some point. And the good news is there is quite a decent amount of space. Now, the middle seat always gets the raw end of the deal. It's not too bad here because that transmission tunnel that's in the middle here is actually kind of skinny. Although it's tall, it is kind of skinny. So having your feet either side of that, it's probably not gonna to be too bad. I have okay amounts of headroom here if I sit in and get myself comfortable. I've no issue with headroom there at all. This driver's seat is set up for my driving position. So I am five foot nine. I do sit slightly closer to the steering wheel maybe than some people, but, and as you can see, I've got tons of knee room there. So I have a couple of more inches there. The good news is as well is that you can get your feet some of the way underneath the seat as well. So if you do need to stretch out a little bit more, you can do it. The window line is nice and low. So smaller kids sitting in a child seat are still gonna be able to see out. Then at the back here, you do have your own uh, climate controls, so you can adjust that back here. There is also two USB ports as well in the back, so you can charge up devices back here as well. One other neat feature is that as well as having pockets in the back of the seat, there are two more pockets sitting up here, and they're ideal for slipping in your mobile phone if it's plugged in and it's charging there, for example, you can just sit it in. So it's nice that they've used a little bit more space with a little bit more practicality. When you break down where this Golf GTI Club Sport fits into the range, it's easy to see how this could quickly become the most popular model. See, in Ireland at least, it's only a few thousand euros more than a standard GTI. And with that, you obviously get the additional 55 horsepower, a little bit more torque that comes up to 400 Newton meters, and a couple of other features like that differential on the front end, and obviously the different styling aspects that I've shown you already in the video. It is also then the guts of 10,000 euros less than a Golf 4. Now the Golf 4 was always the performance car to have from the Volkswagen Group and the last generation Mark 7, Mark 7.5 sold incredibly well. But that's suddenly a bit of a price gulf between um, this car and the Golf 4. And what are you getting extra? Okay, so you're getting all wheel drive. For some people, that will be the big thing. Some people will like the fact that it is the Golf 4. It's, it is the highest model in the Golf family, so to speak but that's still a big chunk of money to pay for something that gives, you know, a car like this gives you almost the same levels of performance and that's before you start tweaking and tinkering with these things. So you are getting a little bit of the best of both worlds with this car. You see, you're getting that extra power. 300 horsepower in this car feels really good. It really suits it. I think if I had any more, it would start to overwhelm that front end. The diff works very, very well. Turning right, giving it the beans, all that kind of stuff. It doesn't induce any sort of really noticeable level of torque steer. It's not like a, an old Astra OPC that would give you a, a 90 left as soon as you put the boot down. So it's still quite a safe pair of hands in that respect. It's not going to let you down in sense of how it's handling and how it performs. It's very predictable, it's very safe, it's very very German in that way. And some people will love that. I like that. I probably only wish that this had a gear selector that I could actually use in three pedals. In terms of how it rides, so that's one of the questions that I've had a lot of people ask me on Instagram is, you know, how does it ride? What's it like? This car doesn't have the optional adaptive dampers, so this is the standard passive suspension on it. it. It's firm, I'll give you that. I'm on a pretty rough road at the moment. It's a bit of a country road and I'm feeling every little undulation that's there. You can probably even hear it in my voice as I'm uh, doing this piece to camera. I don't mind it, I can live with it. It's 
just firm enough without being too firm that it's gonna be a pain in the ass to drive and you're just gonna not enjoy driving it. Um, interestingly, when it gets a little bit higher up to speed and when you start to push this car on a little bit more, it does actually balance out a little bit more. So the higher speed damping rates, I think are a little bit better. And that's something that I found with the standard Golf GTI when I drove that back in Germany, that as you drove it harder, it actually got a little bit better and felt a little bit more settled and a little bit more stable. It's very much the same with this car as well. If there is a chink in the Golf GTI Club Sports armor, it's when you get it onto the motorway. Uh, the road noise really picks up. Uh, this car is running on the Bridgestone tires, it's on the 19 inch wheels. And I noticed that I'm really having to increase the volume of my voice here. There's a lot of road noise that comes through this car. And that's the one thing that if you're gonna be doing longer journeys in this car, that's probably gonna get annoying and probably gonna get old pretty quickly. Um, it just picks up all the sort of undulations or all the little imperfections on the surface and I'm not even at 120 kilometers an hour and it's just it's that bit too loud but let's be honest if you're buying a GTI Club Sport chances are you don't want to take the motorway all that often you want to take these back roads and it's these back roads that this car absolutely devours it's when this car really comes alive and it shows just how that difference in chassis setup can transform the car, puts the power down so well. That suspension being a little bit lower down, a little bit more negative camber, all helps add that more precise feeling to the steering. And the steering is really quite remarkable in this car. It just feels absolutely right. It gives you the right amount of feedback. It doesn't feel like there's a whole lot of artificialness to the whole thing and the brakes as well are incredible and it just puts the power down no issues at all this car loves back roads it's all the performance you're going to want in a hot hatch in a car like this it really is the steering is just feels nice and progressive there's just the right amount of feedback i have this at the moment set everything in the sport mode but the, i've actually left the steering in comfort that's what i prefer with this car it just feels that little bit nicer the sport mode just adds that predictable little bit of weight to it i can live without that because in the comfort mode it's absolutely fine how it is it's very easy to thread this car down a good back road you will if you get a little bit cocky with this car you will feel the back end get a little bit too light if you're a little bit over enthusiastic with your speed into a corner but for the most part it handles extraordinarily well it has all the right amount of grip the chassis just feels really well sorted and it's for most people i think will absolutely love this car on a wet day over the same road with the same driver, I imagine in a Golf 4, you'll get there a little bit quicker. That's really where I think the difference between this and the Golf 4 is. It's just gonna be the fact that you have that extra safety net of having all wheel drive. I could live without that because for me, the reward is how this car drives and the little bit more effort, the little bit more concentration you have to put in with this car. That's what I love about it. It seems odd to level criticism at a car for being too good, but in many ways, this is just such a polished and refined car. It's almost too polished and too refined. I wish as good as that diff is at pulling that 300 horsepower through the front wheels, I wish it just tugged a little bit more at the steering. I wish it felt a little bit more alive. It's just so good at what it does, but in a way that kind of almost goes against what a hot hatch, to me at least, is meant to be. It's meant to be a car that I'm gonna have to really put the effort in. But that aside, when you do put the effort in and you do push this car on, it really handles extraordinarily well. It grips, it holds. 
the steering is really nicely set up. I love how it feels as you turn in. It's relatively communicative as well. The brakes are really good. The, you know, you, it, there's a nice bit of modulation there. I like that. I also personally love the fact that this is a GTI and not a Golf Or. Uh, I'd much rather have that red stripe running through my headlights than a blue stripe, but that's just me. What do you think? Tell us in the comments below. We always love hearing what you guys think as well. This is just my opinion of the car, but we want to know what you think. So tell us in the comments below, get involved. If you've watched the video so far and you've enjoyed it, please do give it a like. And as ever, please, if you don't already subscribe, please do consider hitting the subscribe button. It means a lot to us. If you do that and you hit the notification bell next time we upload a video, you will be alerted to that too. If you want to know more about this car, head over to our website, which is completecar.ie. It's linked down below in the description. You'll find all various reviews, news, everything you need to know about this car, all of its rivals as well. It's all there on the website. So do get involved there, have a look around. There's lots to read and uh, to watch as well. If you subscribe to the channel, that's it. It's Golf GTI Club Sport. I think it's a hell of a good car, probably a little bit too good. And um, well, I'm very, very glad that hot hatches remain that little bit longer because I don't think an electric version of this is gonna give me the same thrill. Thanks for watching.